In this video, we're talking about the squeeze theorem for sequences. So this stuff tends to look a little bit overwhelming, but all I'm saying here is consider three sequences where the terms of this one, the BN sequence, the terms of that one are always trapped between the terms of the other two. So they're between. The terms of BN are bigger than the terms of AN or possibly equal to it, and the terms of BN are less than or equal to the terms of CN. Well, that means if those two sequences, the one that's the lower bound on B and the one that's the upper bound, if they happen to converge to exactly the same number, that forces B to converge to that number as well. And one of the most typical examples where we apply this is with sinusoidal functions. Because like a cosine function is bounded below by negative 1 and above by positive 1. So I want to figure out, does this converge? And I would start by saying, well, the cosine function is always bigger than or equal to negative 1, but less than or equal to 1. And then I could easily build this sequence by dividing by n. So I have negative 1 over n is less than or equal to cosine n over n. It's less than or equal to 1 over n. And then I would say, let's look at the limit of that lower bound. And this clearly goes to 0. Let's look at the limit of the upper bound. So the function that's always above or possibly equal to the one that I'm concerned with. As n goes to infinity, that also goes to 0. So both of these go to 0, and the function we're interested in is trapped between those two functions. So it's also forced to go to 0. So this implies the limit as n goes to infinity of cosine n over n is also equal to 0, so the sequence converges to 0. The last thing I want to do is just pop in a little picture of what this looks like so we can reinforce the geometric idea of what's happening here. And here it is. I have my upper bound function. Um, f of n is 1, 1 over n, or I could say f of x is 1 over x. I have my lower bound function. It says g of x is negative 1 over x. And in between, this, this green continuous function is cosine x over x. If I evaluate this only at integer values, that's what the red dots are. And those represent the actual numbers in this sequence. So if I look at n equals 1, my upper bounding sequence is above that. And my lower bounding sequence is below it at n equals 2. Similar, right? So these cosine n over n terms are always trapped between these two. I can see this almost getting to being exactly equal to at n equals 3. And that's because the cosine, value, the cosine function is extremely close to its minimum value because 3 is very close to pi, where the cosine is very close to negative 1. So hopefully this helps to communicate the geometry a little bit better. If the points on a sequence are always trapped between the points on two other sequences and those two go down to a finite value, the one in between has no choice but to go to the same finite value.